Good morning, folks. Today we see the devastating power of the planet. String Theory steps in to throw a haymaker at dark energy. We've got the top news and more starting at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star relatively calm as we remain staring down a large coronal hole. We've had no solar flares due to the lack of sunspots, but over on the left, just south of the equator, we do see a bright region coming in that is also active in ionized helium returns here in 304 angstroms. When we jump back to ionized iron in 171 angstroms and reverse the color, we'll pick up ambient fields, revealing the loops of the sunspot group just out of view. We'll have to be watching that one closely. Meanwhile, in the solar wind, we see the plateau of the intensified coronal hole stream we entered a few days ago and are exiting this morning. As we come out of the stream, geomagnetic reverberations are continuing a bit. We do have more space weather coming in about three days when the southern coronal hole stream arrives. We'll connect magnetically to it tonight, so eyes on the lithosphere in the interim. Let's go now to GO16 and look down on Hurricane Michael. The track we posted in last night's video does remain, and it will be the pathway yanking east once it makes landfall. Wanted to pull the lightning overlay so you can see the circulating energy, especially within the eye of the storm. That is eye wall lightning wrapping around the core of Hurricane Michael. Folks, there is new footage in of the Palu tsunami and earthquake damage. Footage didn't make it out immediately, but probably is the most horrifying to come out of the region thus far. Imagine the shaking that would have caused that damage there. Up next, let's go to the U.S. climate report for September. Once again, we see excess heat on the nighttime minimum record, but when shifting to the daytime highs, not so much of a wash. In fact, we've got considerable blue. The days aren't getting hotter. The nights just aren't dropping down as low. Spain up next. Absolutely brutal flash flooding has killed at least five and has washed away or destroyed hundreds of cars, buildings, and other infrastructure. Similar reports may be soon coming out of the Middle East and Asia as India's eastern subcontinent says hello to a cyclone, while that one we eyed a few days ago in the northwest Indian Ocean is going to hit the Oman and then Yemen border this weekend, linger, and then slowly shift north, eyes open. Let's go next to string theory where it appears that the portion delivering to them the most confidence happens to conflict with dark energy in the expanding universe. They say dark energy should take a haircut and go for a new look where the universe loses enough energy over time to potentially halt any expansion. There is lots in this article for Electric Universe fans to debunk, but it is fun watching them fight each other for now. Up next, we're looking at the top candidates for missions landing beyond Mars. Obviously, the top choices should be the icy moon worlds of Jupiter and Saturn. However, when we go there, we may be shocked to find spiked landing zones. New studies demonstrate that a porcupine ice world may likely be what's waiting for us when we finally get out there. Want to quickly mention, we have fixed that planetary geometry deeper look from the start of October. We've got the Comet of the Year episode posted to deeper look as well. All special Deeper Look videos and our weekly podcast is found at suspiciousobservers.org for members, hundreds of hours of material for the price of a Happy Meal, and no glyphosate. So there, we've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. It's why these news are able to come out for free each day. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.